So I've spent over two weeks wearing a Fitbit Versa and an Apple Watch Series 3 at the same time, and I've come to this conclusion. The Fitbit Versa's gonna make you fat. Now, before you think I'm just making this all up for a clickbait video, here's a plain looking bar graph that shows you my daily caloric burn summarized over 14 days between the two devices. Fitbit Versa said I burned close to 39,000 calories and the Apple Watch Series 3 said I burned 34,600 calories. That's a difference of almost 4,600 calories. If I plot it on a day by day basis, the blue lines are the calories that the Versa said I've burned and the green are the ones that the Apple Watch says I've burned. There are two days where I didn't wear the devices because wearing two watches at the same time all the time sucks, so that difference 4600 calories is probably higher now is 4600 calories a big difference well that's equal to not one big mac meal with medium fries and coke not two not three but four big mac meals so according to fitbit i could have eaten all this food and technically not have gained any weight so before I go into the details of what I've done over the last few weeks, I want to know what you guys think. Give the video a thumbs down if you think the Apple Watch is right, or a thumbs up if you think the Fitbit Versa is right. Next few minutes, I'm gonna dive a bit deeper into the differences between the two devices. I'm gonna show you the differences in terms of calories burnt between workouts, the average heart rate across my workouts, the average max heart rate across my workouts, the difference in the flight of stairs each device recorded, and the number of steps each device recorded. I'll also share with you what Fitbit said about the calorie differences when I talked to their customer service. And to end it all off, I'm going to tell you what I think is the more accurate fitness tracker. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, a dot ca. At Mobile Reviews, a Monty and I base all our reviews on actual usage. We've gotten a bit bleh with smartwatches over the last few years because they're just underwhelming and very expensive. I was going to leave the Fitbit Versa alone until, saw, until I saw several articles with these headlines that made me think, you know, maybe it's that much better. So I bought one, used it by itself, paired to an iPhone 8 Plus to get the full Versa experience. And then I paired my Apple Watch to my iPhone 10 and used the two smartwatches together for two weeks, closer to three. Now, everything I did, I did with two smartwatches. Every single time I took a shower, wore two smartwatches. Every single workout I did, two smartwatches. Every single time I went to sleep, two smartwatches. If I had to take one off, I had to take the other one off. And so it just got really annoying. By the end of this entire review period, I realized that wearing two smartwatches, and this, is, this isn't the first time I've done this with two smartwatches, is still very stupid, but that's what I have to do in order to get you this great review. Comparison. Now I did switch which arm the device sat on after seven days to see if it made any difference. Now from a fitness perspective, personally, I love working out. I go five to six times a week at 6 a.m. at a CrossFit gym and I do about an hour recovery at night as well. I love the variability of the programming of the workouts at the box that I go to. Now I'm generally quite content with how my body looks given that I'm really not looking to impress anybody. Married. I work full time, have an infant son and do all the cooking for my family. Now, honestly, I've only seen my abs in the last few years. Um, I've only had them since my mid thirties. If I go back, if you actually go back to some of my earlier videos, you'll see me closer to 210 pounds, whereas I'm right now, I'm between 165 and 170. In the last few years through trial and error, I've generally figured out what I need to eat to stay relatively lean. So that's my baseline. So let's talk about those differences. First up, we'll talk about the differences between total calories burned between workouts. Now to get to this chart that you're looking at, I ran every workout I did as a general workout or a weightlifting on the Versa and a hit on the Apple Watch. I'd start one device and then the other and then end each session in the same sequence. As you can see, the Fitbit Versa is generally higher than the Apple Watch. Now it might not seem like much on a day-to-day -day basis, but between those 11 workouts that I recorded, the difference is 14% or an extra 527 burns calories burned uh, by the Versa, which is a little higher than the 13% difference of the overall caloric differences. Now, was there a workout that seemed to cause more of a difference? Well, not that I could figure out or notice. For example, on May 13th, I did a workout where I ran one mile and then proceeded to do 10 rounds of five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 15 air squats with a 20 pound weight vest. Now, after I finished the 10 rounds, I ran another mile. So on the first mile, there was a 26% difference between the devices. During the body weight movements, there was a minus 9% difference and on the last mile, there was a 37% difference. There was no rhyme or reason that I could detect on why I would get these results. I expect the runs to be similar on the same device, but they were not. In this instance, I think the Apple Watch is going to be more accurate because the calorie count is quite similar within two. Whereas in on the Versa, it's different by over about 20. So, you know, that's quite a big difference in my opinion. So after analyzing the two weeks worth of, uh, I'm sorry, I have to eat one of these. This, this smells too good. After analyzing the data for two weeks, 
I was unsatisfied, so I had to go back to my gym and do another set of tests. The one thing I wanted to see on top of, you know, seeing which one burned more calories or less calories was to compare it against uh, some of the gym equipment that actually tells you how many calories you've burned. So I had access to a Concept 2 rower and an Air Assault bike. I chose these pieces of equipment because they include a calories burn component on their displays. Now for the first test, I decided to go with a 100 calorie row. Now apparently I didn't push the stupid start button on the Versa, uh, so I only have the data for the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch said I burned 64 calories, which in a 100 calorie row is a kick in the crotch. Next exercise I tried to do was a five minute stint on the Air Assault bike. Now I was feeling very adventurous and decided to use the bike portion of my Apple Watch. Apparently bike on the Apple Watch will only work if you're physically moving, so during my five minutes on the bike from hell, my Apple Watch thought I did nothing. According to the readout on the bike, I burned 59 calories, while the Versa thought I burned 46. So my last attempt at comparing the two, I went back to the rower and decided to do only a thousand meter row because I was getting tired. According to the Concept 2 readout, it required me to burn 63 calories in order to do row thousand meters. The Apple Watch said I burned 49 and the Versa said 50, which is pretty close, but not close to what the rower said. In this instance, I would be more inclined to believe the Concept 2 rower. How about the average heart rate across all my workouts? Now, one of the num contributing factors to the number of calories that you burn is, well, your heart rate. The higher it is, more calories you're gonna burn because that means you're moving more. With a 14% difference in calories burned during workouts, I would expect there to be a similar difference in the average heart rate between the workouts. Oddly enough, there wasn't. There wasn't a consistent trend between the two devices. Some days the Apple Watch was higher, and the other days the Versa was higher. Now I tried to go a little bit deeper with the heart rate data and plotted all the max heart rate values. Now this isn't going to be very useful since not many of us work out at our max heart rate for very long. Uh, but in this data set, the Apple Watch had a max heart rate that was eight beats higher on average than the Versa. And at this point, I'm just trying to find any difference between the two. Going back to the rower and air assault bike uh, comparison, the Apple Watch had the higher heart rate readings when compared to the Versa which was kind of neat because, well, especially on the last test where I had two, where both devices worked, the uh, calories burn was the same. Next up are the number of flights climbed. Now over the span of two weeks, my Apple Watch recorded 213 stairs climbed while the Versa recorded 260. That's a difference of 67 flights of stairs, which is about half the height of the CN Tower or 60% of the height of the Sears Tower. So over the two weeks, the accumulation of the heights actually got quite large, 67 flights of stairs. Now, is I would imagine that those 67 flights of stairs would contribute to the calorie difference, but it won't take into account all of it because while well, 4,600 calories divided by 67 is 68, and there's no way that I'd burn 68 calories per flight of stairs. Like that would be an incredible workout if you just walk one flight of stairs, 68 calories. And if you're wondering how these two devices calculate a flight of stairs, both of them do it based on the uh, height change. So 10 feet is a flight of stairs for both these devices. On to step counting, and this difference is gonna be a doozy. Sort of. <laughs> the Fitbit Versa seems to be very optimistic with calories burned. It would seem logical that it would record more steps. In my tests, the Apple Watch recorded close to an extra 10,000 steps in the 14 day comparison period. I personally think that step tracking is a silly metric, but Fitbit uses it to base your weekly ranking in your friends list based on, well, the number of steps that you've taken. The funny thing is that which hand you place your device on will make a difference in terms of the total number of steps that you take on a day-to-day -day basis. Remember I told you that halfway through the dual watch testing phase, I swapped hands? Well, the watch that sat on my dominant hand was always going to be the one that got the most steps. Between May 1st and 8th, I wore the Apple Watch on my dominant hand. Between the 9th and the 15th, the Versa was on my dominant hand. But again, 10,000 steps seems like a lot, but it doesn't correlate with the Fitbit Versa. Uh, telling me that it's okay to eat four extra Big Mac meals every two weeks. Now, if you've been paying attention to my graph, you'll notice that there were two days where the calculated calories were actually very low. There were two days in the 14-day period I decided not to wear two smartwatches at once because it just got annoying. And so what you're seeing is what Fitbit and Apple think my BMR is. In general, my BMR are all the calories my body needs just to exist. So if I was to sit in a chair all day and not move, I need about 1,800 calories to survive. Was there a big difference in the actual BMR numbers? 
Not really, as they were within 100 calories of one another, so that's not the source of the differences. So if you're finding this video useful, considering getting any sort of gear or tech or anything uh, from Amazon using my links, it doesn't have to be the thing that I link you to Amazon, It just ha you just have to use my link to get there. This entire video took a long time to make. If you notice some of the dates, um, I finished collecting all the data in the middle of May and the, we're approaching the end of May. So it's taken a long time to compile everything and to make sure that I've got everything right. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Uh, so all this time and all the devices I have to go get myself. So any sort of support you can give me is greatly appreciated. So here's the recap. The biggest difference was the flight of stairs, but it's not the biggest contributing factor. Again, 68 calories per flight of stairs. I don't think so. Uh, 10,000 step difference with the Apple Watch being higher in that regard. So that doesn't quite make any sense since the Versa is higher in terms of total calorie burns. Now 527 extra calories burned with my uh, Versa seems significant, but considering that, you know, I only work out an hour a day, um, not a big contributing factor, I don't think. And last but not least is the heart rates, kind of the same, not a big difference there. Or BMR for that matter. So basically the biggest differences occur throughout the day where I'm not doing anything. So doing this video and doing all the video editing for this on comparison, that's where all the discrepancies are gonna happen. By the time I got to here, I still hadn't come across anything that would tell me what the difference is, why it would be so much different. So I went and contacted Fitbit's customer service. They went through all my settings, which was kind of neat on my online profile, and told me what was wrong and what wasn't. Apparently I weighed a little bit more than what I was. All those values changed. Um, and at the end of the day, they just told me that their numbers were estimates. But the thing is that the Apple Watch is doing the exact same thing. It's a best guess. It's an estimate. Like it's just the entire health and fitness industry is basically just best guesses and estimates like it's just it's a trillion dollar industry based on almost you know most of it's just pseudoscience bro science now tracking your health and fitness using an apple watch or a fitbit versa is probably one of the lesser evils in the grand scheme of all the things that you read and can do uh, to your body like those articles that tell you that you can spot reduced fat, I don't think so. It's gonna be better than those articles that tell you if you just eat this one thing in your diet, you're gonna gain 20 pounds of muscle, no. Using an Apple Watch and a Fitbit Versa is probably gonna be better than you know scrolling through your Instagram fitness feeds because those things are just insane. Insanely not possible. Using these devices is definitely gonna be better than listening to uh, whatever manufacturer makes these sugary uh, drinks of death, telling you that the problem isn't the crazy amount of sugar in this pop, it's the lack of exercise that people are doing that's you know causing the obesity problem. Apple Watch and Fitbit's definitely gonna be better than whatever uh, lollipop appetite suppressant thing that's pandered by some celebrities. And definitely better than spending $2,000 buying a machine that you can put in your basement that claims to burn three times as many calories or fat uh, because of some special movement. Now who's right? At the end of the day, who's closer to the truth? From my perspective, the Apple Watch, I think, produces a better estimate. And there's two reasons for this. The first is that some of the health data used for the calculation actually comes from your device and not just the Apple Watch. So I generally prefer to have more sources of data than fewer. Uh, it's not a lot, but at least two sources of the data is better than just the one for the Fitbit Versa. Now the second reason why I say the Apple Watch is closer is that the Apple Watch values are closer to another meal plan template that I've been loosely using over the last year. This template has me eating approximately 2400 calories for light workout days, which is basically every day, 2600 calories for moderate days, which I barely do, and for complete machines or professional athletes, 29 to 3000 calories for days where you're breathing heavily for two hours or more. My body composition has generally responded quite well to the template, and I can't fathom having to eat an extra three to 400 calories a day in order to reach the levels as shown by my Fitbit Versa. It really boils down to what you eat. An extra three to 400 calories a day in terms of, you know, clean carbs, lean meats, and vegetables probably won't break you. Um, you'll probably gain a bit more mass over time, but it's not gonna make you fat if, if you, you know, when compared to eating like three to four extra hundred calories in terms of a bag of chips. That's gonna be way more detrimental to your health than, you know, three to 400 calories of good clean eating. So that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Again, if you found this comparison useful or appreciative of my time, considering getting all your stuff, regardless of what it is, through Amazon using my links, I get a small percentage of whatever you buy. And so basically it just helps me pay 
for this McDonald's meal that I'm basically not gonna eat. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm totally gonna eat this. Monty's gonna help. Thanks for watching.